So Emily has had her time in Paris. Now it's Miss Harris's turn. Miss Harris goes to Paris, which hits theaters July 15th. Is a feel-good fashion movie, What's Not to Love. You know, without spoiling it, can you give fans a taste on what they can expect from the movie and what they might love? Um, I think it's, it's, it's a story about love, about um, uh, re, re-energized love, about a woman who put her heart on ice and never expected life to um, give her the gift of falling in love again and um, and through the prism of a dress of something materialistic that she wants to acquire she's going to follow a dream that is bigger than her bigger than the life she's she's she always had and 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 with operating out of love and and following that drive she will impact many lives and uh, and and help people blossom on her way it's a story about love. Fashion love is love. just an excuse. Um. <laughs> yeah. um, so tell me what made you gravitate towards this film about love and taking on your role as Andre Flavel. Um I met, I met Tony Fabian on, uh, as I was shooting another project. Uh, it was in, on this project I was with um, Anna Sibel, who was the a set designer and they were friends and he and Sibel was also, also doing set design for um, Mrs. Harris so they were talking about their future project and um, and I happened to be in my in the green room and as they were talking we had like a random conversation which probably gave him an idea and he sent me the script two months later which I read and then I read the book and then I auditioned and um, I was I was lucky enough to get to portray Andre in this beautiful period piece. And like you mentioned, this film centers around Miss Harris not only finding love within herself, but she falls in love with this couture Dior gown. Has there ever been an instance where you had a moment where you're obsessed with a fashion brand or a piece of clothing that you just had to get your hands on? Um, <clears throat> I've never been obsessed with, with, with uh, clothing I mean, I I like like anyone else to uh, choose my uh, choose my armor before I go out into the world. And uh, but I I was never one to make big statements with my with what I'm wearing. I'm uh, I think, but if I can uh, project or transcribe that um, obsession to something else, I would say traveling. Uh, there's a lot of places I've always dreamed to go to and. Uh, and uh, some of them took me a while to a- achieve, and it can it can be consuming. Previously, you mentioned while you're working with Emily in Paris, you had your pick from the clothing warehouse. Tell me about what your wardrobe experience was like working on this film, and if you got to see some Dior pieces like yourself. I w- first of all, I was working uh, with uh, Jenny Be- Bevan. Uh, who had two Academy Awards at the time, and I just got a third one. Um, and she she had a clear sense of the 50s. Of of um, rem- she remembered her father and things he was wearing and 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 little tools he was using. So she had a clear perspective on the 50s, and she would like give me um, just give me memories and memories, and just it was it was just a such a so transporting to listen to her because she was giving me um, all these souvenirs out of experience and and so she des- she designed that cool suit gray suit very classic for an accountant in the 50s but that really felt like a time machine with the set and the, the dresses your uh, you know um, gave us landed us two dresses and gave us like the patterns to to for Jenny to remake the new look collection so uh, it was just it was just stepping into a time machine and, and and going back in time. Speaking about period piece fashion, what would you say? What decade would do you seem to like resonate with in terms of fashion? Like fifties, sixties, seventies? What may happen? I think it evolves with time. You know. Uh, as a teenager, I was very drawn to the 70s and 
you know, hipstery, rootsy. I live in the wood and I, I, I feed off uh, plants and, uh, and listen to Bon Iver and stuff like that. And then I, 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 it evolved to something more classic. I feel like we're going back into the 90s right now. It, it, I, I guess it just, it just depends where you're, you're at in your life and what inspires you. Um, I th some people find their groove and their style and go with it for the rest of our lives and I've never been able to just stick to one option. I like to, I like to evolve and, and challenge myself to not sit in comfort too much. Yeah, that's fair. You love variety. Um, so going back to your character, opposite of Miss Harris's sunny attitude, we kind of see that your character kind of appears to be more cynical, cynical to love at first, um, but is Lucas Bravo a hopeless romantic, or do you feel like you're a little bit more cautious like Andre is? Um, well, I think we all are hopeless romantics, you know? Uh, at the end of the day, everything we do, we do it in order to be validated, accepted, and loved. Um, and then we managed with the tools we've been given and to the best of our abilities. So I've always felt like this hopeless romantic term is, is a bit um, elusive because we all are at the end of the day. This is what we're looking for, you know. There's no higher energy than love. So uh, for that matter, I think I am and uh, Andre is too. You've previously mentioned that you would recommend Parc du Butte Chamont to first timers when they visit Paris, but has that changed? And for you personally, is there anywhere in the city that kind of makes you go, wow, like that magical feeling that I'm in Paris, kind of how Miss Harris like felt when she was kind of going around the city? Well, but Paris, Paris's energy are, has really shifted since uh, the, the, the attacks we had a few years back. You know, uh, Parisians, instead of uh, succumbing to fear, decided to just live in the present and enjoy as much as possible because, you know, if you can go have coffee at a terrace and get shot or go to a random concert and get shot as well, what's the point in, in, in living in fear and being hit? Because anything can happen. So everybody went collectively into a sort of let's leave state of mind. And, and at the same time, our mayor was taking all the cars out and making like bicycle roads everywhere, planting trees and, and it, Paris is kind of turned into Amsterdam slowly and it's still evolving. And so um, I think it's a general feeling, the entire city, I'm, I'm very proud to be in Paris. It feels safe and, and, and clean and, and there's a variety of options and diversity and, and restaurants and you can make it what you want. There's all the, uh, the, are, the all the options are here, and I think a great city can be defined by the fact that it can be adjusted to your personality. This is how I feel about Paris right now. Just like Alba Baptista's character Natasha, you both are really outspoken about wanting to be seen more than just a pretty face. But I want to ask you, Lucas, you know, what are you up to these days? What are your summer plans? <laughs> uh, what are you watching? What movies, books, shows? What's the next move for you? Um, I'm going to try to remember all the questions. Um, I'm shooting season three of Emily in Paris right now. I'm reading A Thousand Pieces by James Frey. I'm watching the fourth season of Edmit's Tale. And uh, what else? Where am I going on vacation? No vacation this, this year. I'm shooting till mid-September on Emily. What else? That's, that's all the questions? Was there yeah, another one? Anything, anything else? Anything else? Something crispy. Something <laughs> <laughs> crispy. Um, I don't know. I'm, I've, I've, I really... I've, I really I've been staying between the lines lately, you know, 